When people think about the Dominion War, they generally remember how powerful the Dominion was when the Federation first encountered them, and then they remember the war itself. However, I think people miss a vital piece of the Dominion War arc, and that's the destabilization of the Alpha Quadrant. With the war lost, the destabilization of the Alpha Quadrant before one shot was fired in the war was perhaps the greatest accomplishment of the Dominion. The Dominion was so powerful that just the threat of them almost destroyed entire governments that had prospered for hundreds of years. I'll have to ask your forgiveness somewhat as I go against the norm in this series. Instead of an overview, let's go a bit more in depth on some of the things that happened during the destabilization. Specifically, let's take a look at what I like to call the Leighton Conspiracy, also known as the failed Starfleet Coup. On Stardate 49170, a terrorist attack was carried out on Earth during the Antwerp Conference. The conference was a high-level meeting between both the Romulan Star Empire and the United Federation of Planets. Additionally, we know that several other dignitaries were there as well. As an example, the Tholians were also present. Without warning, a bomb exploded at the conference, killing many. Investigations showed conclusive evidence that the attack on the conference had been a terrorist attack orchestrated by a changeling. I think it's very important to realize the consequences and impact of a terrorist attack on the United Earth. While I don't say this lightly, I do think it's reasonable to say that people in the world today have become somewhat desensitized to terrorist attacks. We know that our governments can't protect us all the time, and terrorist attacks are unfortunately, something that we have to deal with. It's not an uncommon occurrence now. But this wasn't so for the Federation, especially at the capital. The United Earth was home base of the Federation and Starfleet. It was paradise. These things didn't happen on Earth until now. And once more, not only was there a terrorist attack, but high-level officials for the Romulans and the Tholians were killed. No wonder both governments signed non-aggression pacts. The Federation certainly couldn't defend them. After the attack, the defense of Earth and the Federation from Dominion attacks fell to Vice Admiral Leighton. Leighton was a decorated officer from the Federation Zinkethi War and was well respected among his peers and those under his command. In order to form strategies to fight the Dominion, Leighton would recall Captain Benjamin Sisko and Chief of DS9 Security Odo to Earth. They would begin to work meticulously to develop strategies that would allow them to prevent changelings from infiltrating Starfleet again. These measures would be drastic and overreaching. This would include phaser systems installed in every room of Starfleet and set phaser settings of at least 3.5. Rooms would be regularly sweeped with phaser technology and any changeling in the room would be forced to revert out of its transform state. You would also see blood tests of Starfleet personnel and their families. And this was just the beginning. However, it wouldn't be enough. Odo, while discussing the impressiveness of Starfleet Command, was able to ascertain that the man claiming to be Admiral Leighton in front of him was in fact a changeling. Commander Benteen, a protege of Vice Admiral Leighton, later lamented how long she had been with the imposter and how articulate and convincing he was. It is interesting to see how dangerous the Dominion, and specifically the Changelings, are. Starfleet had revamped all of its security, all of its codes, it added new countermeasures, and it wasn't enough. Vice Admiral Leighton himself, the man who was supposed to keep everyone safe, they had been able to act as if they were him. And possibly all of Leighton's information, everything he knew, was now compromised. Phaser sweeps, blood samples, everything had failed, and these countermeasures that would need to be made even stricter were beginning to be resisted by the populace. Benjamin Sisko's own father, Joseph Sisko, was arrested for not allowing a sample of his blood to be taken. And what's worrying is that even Benjamin Sisko thinks his father is being unreasonable in this for not wanting to be searched. Ben even offers to have his own blood taken. I mean, who cares, right? It's for everyone's safety. Why wouldn't you be willing to give up a little freedom to keep everyone safe? Benjamin's father points out how stupid it is, how you could fool the system and that personal rights were more important. Benjamin's father points out how stupid it is, how the Dominion could still fool the system and they just lost personal rights with no gain. It really points out how the Federation was becoming even more totalitarian, something they claimed to fight against. And this is where we begin to see the schism. The Federation, beacon of personal rights, well, relatively, was beginning to ignore its own principles in the name of safety. And it wasn't just Starfleet. Citizens began to question each other. Family members wondered if their own brother or sister were changelings. Neighbor against neighbor. Everyone was scared and confused. And then, in the middle of this hysteria, the entirety of the United Earth global power grid was compromised. All of Earth went dark, and that included planetary defenses. It also meant that Possibly a Dominion strike force was already on its way. This, of course, spurred more militant elements of Starfleet into action. 
Admiral Layton, with the assistance of Captain Sisko, approached the President of the United Federation of Planets and was able to convince him to do even more sweeping legislation. He was convinced that they even needed to do a more thorough crackdown on individual rights. The President had been resistant to this before, not wanting to move Earth into a military state. The fact that the Changelings would be able to infiltrate and disable Earth's defenses so easily changed his mind. And then, citizens of the United Earth started seeing armed Federation officers on their streets. The security measures placed Earth on lockdown. Earth was secured with phaser rifles and random blood sample tests. With the exception of the Borg Crisis, a state of emergency on the scale of what Earth was currently seeing had not occurred in over a hundred years, and it was welcomed. Starfleet, the Federation, everyone wanted it to happen. It was only a short while after the power outage that Odo and Captain Sisko became suspicious. After looking into things, they ultimately determined that the Dominion had not in fact sabotaged the power grid. They questioned the Dominion agent's ability to disable the entire grid so efficiently, and that if the goal was to weaken Earth, the exact opposite was accomplished. It had been fortified. Ultimately, Sisko would discover that everything had been orchestrated by Leighton, that a group of cadets had been utilized to disable the grid, that it had all been a ploy to give more control to Starfleet. He went to the President, who lamented that any action against the Admiral would be political suicide. This is what the United Earth wanted. In order for the President to do anything, he would need undeniable facts. So Odo and Benjamin did more research and discovered that Leighton had been planning this for a while. Leighton had made transfers of over 400 officers that he could trust into key positions. There was no question that Leighton was planning something major. With all of this evidence in hand, Sisko approached the Federation president again, only to find Leighton there. Sisko was given a blood test, and it showed that he, himself, was a changeling infiltrator. And now, with a Starfleet coup in progress, Benjamin Sisko would be locked up as an agent of the Dominion, with no way to stop what was about to happen. Okay guys, stay tuned when we bring the Dominion War series back first thing in December. I'll be giving you a double shot in that episode though. We'll be finishing the Starfleet coup and a battle breakdown all in one episode. Every day will be Guy Fox Day from then on out, right? I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. They are the lifeblood of this channel, or at least a vital part of it. Of course, a special thanks to viewers like you. This wouldn't be possible without you, so please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And guys, I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.